Suffering and shame, and I love that old cross where the dearest and best, for a host of lost sinners were slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophy. I did that the other day when you gave me a lift. What did I do? Stopped, went on, stopped again. <laughs> Shows an indecisive approach to life. That's my horoscope. Got an early riser for a Sunday. It's my Sunday job, getting the papers. They don't deliver around here. You get your own or you do without. You find your digs all right? Aye, aye, I, I did. Want a lift? You're undermining my resolution to walk my head off. Your head? Clear the cobwebs away. Fill it with beautiful thoughts. I'd better remove the temptation. Thanks for the offer, anyway. I know when I'm not wanted. That's not what I say. Pleasant dreams. And how are you feeling this morning? Like a man who faces a day full of promise. Promise of a thick head is what you looked like last night. It was a good job your head folded before your legs. I'd never have got you upstairs. Oh, come on, man. I wasn't that bad. Anyway, thanks for letting me stay here. I wasn't too keen on going back to the house, Dad being away. What do you want for your breakfast? A bit of toast will do fine. You'll have a proper breakfast. Understand? Bit of toast. Whatever you say, Gran. You haven't stayed here since you were a little lad. Used to be one of your treats then. Still is. You have a smooth tongue. I'll say that for you. Did you leave Ruth Turner in the same condition? Well, she wouldn't touch a drop. She was driving. But she got more sense than you. Where do you think you're off to? I thought I'd go for the papers. But look, you can go for your breakfast after you've eaten your papers. <laughs> do you think that's funny to you? It's the way you say it. Don't make fun of your gran. She's getting old. Not too old to wrap you over your knuckles, though. Where did you say your dad's gone? Fishing. Fishing, is it? Now, I wonder what those two are up to. <laughs> sorry, Ruth. Uh, sorry, I should have knocked. No, I'm sorry. I forgot. Max still asleep? Yes, he always sleeps Sunday mornings. One of his few indulgences. You're unusually bright for an early riser. What you mean is, why haven't I got a hangover? Well, don't we all on a Sunday morning? Oh, now, come off it, Ross. You know I've been hitting the bottle lately. I've not been around, have I? Anyway, you obviously didn't hit it last night. No, Max was in one of his better moods last night. He does have them occasionally. Oh, I hate the stuff, really. I could give it up tomorrow. If only I could join the human race, the part of it that lives to some purpose. When Max looked at me last night, he actually appeared to see me. I know what that means, of course. What does it mean? Henry's gone off and left him in charge. <laughs> He's like a child that needs to be trusted. He wants to be able to say, look at me, I can do it, aren't I clever? He's just trying to prove something. I can remember when he first smoked. It was like a ritual. 
He wasn't aping the adults. He was declaring himself a member of the club. Have you heard from Brassington? He rang Gran when he got there last night. Where is he? He says it's a mystery tour. I don't suppose he did, but I'd like to think he did it for me. To some extent, anyway. Pin the proverbial note on the office door, the one that says, gone fishing. you. Not being unsociable. I'm a coffee and toast type myself. Look, I'm sorry about, you know, just barging in like that. Forget it. Only for God's sake, don't go joking about it when you get to work eventually. You'd be surprised what gets back to the kids in my class through their parents. I forgot you were there, that's all. I thought I was on my own with Dad being away. You're not used to lodgers, are you? No, you're the first. And it was a favour to Les, frankly. Well, I'll cook for myself after this, if it's all right with you. I'm a reasonably practised housewife. Been doing it since my marriage broke up. Well, yes, yes, that would help. I'll start to look around for somewhere right away. That'll take a week or two. We've been a static population up to the last few years. Not used to catering for people passing through. You are passing through, I suppose. I don't know. You hope to put down roots somewhere or other. You hope. What's this strike about at the works? Hasn't Max told you? Oh, discuss work with me, a woman. The company have offered the men an increase. The men have accepted, but the company can't pay unless it's tied in with a productivity deal. But the men want still more money. The government department dealing with it is dragging its feet, and the men think the company are using that as an excuse not to pay. Or oh, someone's making them think so. Will the company pay? Oh, good Lord, yes. They want the damn thing settled. The union knows they do. It's a wildcat strike, you know. It doesn't have union backing. Max is very curious as to why you're here. Is he? You ever thought of coming back? For good, I mean. Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. And how would that affect us? In what way? They wouldn't ask you to take Brassington's place eventually instead of Max, would they? Who wants to know? You or Max? Me, of course. It's possible that they might ask me. What would you say? Oh, oh Sarah, this is all speculation. You've changed, haven't you? Have I? I saw the veil drop just now. On the old Ross, I mean. The one that used to tell the truth and shame the devil. Even to the point of falling out with Henry. You're a company man now, aren't you? A devious London executive type, you mean? No, I don't think you'd ever become quite like that. Unless it happened without you being aware that it was happening. People do change without knowing, don't they? Sarah, I don't honestly think I should discuss it. Oh. Work not to be discussed with women. It does affect me too, you know, his work. Now you're pumping me, playing on my weakness. What's your weakness, Ross? What I was, what I am. You, Max, Dad, my family. You damn well know I'd never do anything that wasn't for the best. My father always used to say that just before he did something he knew I wouldn't like.
It's the fishing you've come for, is it? It's the school. It's Guy. He's gone off again. Oh, God. Second time since he went back, apparently. He vanished yesterday. They found him eventually. They hope they will today, but they thought we ought to know. Poor little devil. I hated the bloody place myself. Max didn't. He did, but won't admit it. Something to do with gritting the teeth, staying the pace, stiff up a lip down, you know. Guy doesn't like it, but he's not a quitter. I think there's something else behind all this. Max will hit the roof when I tell him. I thought he took it quite well that first time. Mum dying softened him up, I suppose. Strange how mortality makes us human. Ross, what brings you out so early? I brought you the Sunday bump, but it seems you already got it. Oh. Was it for me, the phone? No, no, it was for me. You couldn't call that little art washing up, but uh, it's done anyway. Thanks. There's a house for sale down the road, by the way. A house? You were talking about putting down roots. Oh, I have a house already. My wife lives in it. With the child of the marriage, as I say in the courts. I pay the mortgage every month for most of the rest of my life, maybe. Bitter? Not against her. Who then? The well, system. What system? Marriage? It's voluntary, you know. It's not compulsory. I meant the whole damn thing that we will live. Society. Chaos. Hmm. You sound like my brother Les. He'd like to bring more order into things. He'd like the state to sort out his mistakes. Not you, though. No, not me. You like the chaos, the free-for-all, the every-man-for-himself sort of world, do you? I didn't say I liked it. It's the way things are. It's the world that we live in. You can't see any way of changing it at all. Ah, oh, we've reached the way, have we? The way, the truth and the life. You can't see one? No, I damn well can't. Beg your pardon. I'd have thought you were more intelligent than that. Oh, you mean intelligent enough to see the truth as you see it? Where's the truth in the political spectrum? It's pretty widely, thinly spread, if you ask me. Not that you would, of course. You're one of those, aren't you? Those what? The converted. The believers in the word. It's like a religion to you, isn't it? No wonder your ranks are swollen with left footers. Left footers? It's a saying we have round here for ex-Catholics. Like you. It was a long shot, but I can see that you're too honest to deny it. You would say that we were all born innocent and that only society as it is corrupts us. As if innocence was desirable, even. Is it not? Well, even if it is, I don't want society preserving my innocence for me. Always assuming I still had it, of course, I'd prefer to do that myself, thank you. Or fail in the attempt. The cult of the individual. I'm a teacher. I teach individuals. But you control the class, try to preserve their innocence. I try to teach them choice. Without bias? No, not without bias. I tell them about my bias, though my beliefs, I don't try to con them. You think I would? The end justifies the means for you, doesn't it? That's where the silence begins, is it?
I'd have thought you'd have been on the hotline to the transport house by now. I'd have thought you'd have been on the hotline to them fish in there. You lost your canny, have you? Yeah, well, you were catching them all, weren't you? That is what I'm here for, to fish. You lost your canny at the other end, didn't you? Who says? They voted against the union, despite what you'd got to say. Our first unofficial strike. Your experience, eh? You lost your way without me to look after you, have you? <laughs> the only time you ever looked after me is when looking after me means looking after your members. That is what I'm there for. Mm. Used to be them and us once. You on one side, me on the other. Nowadays, it's you and me against the generation we bred as often as not. I'm not against our lives. I'm against the company he keeps, that's all. You'll find them a lot sight more wily than those trout in there. I make my own flies. I neither buy nor borrow. Not even for mates. And I take my own counsel and all. Mm -hmm. You remember when we used to come here as lads with Jesse and Meg? We were a terrible pair in those days. <laughs> Meg used to shush me if ever I used to talk about him in front of Les or our Ruth. And she didn't do much shushing before, when we were learning. Only our women get prim after they're wed when they're not a four. If you hadn't married out of your class, we'd have had sisters for wives. That would have caused some controversy, hmm? My <laughs> God, we thought we were devils, didn't we? <laughs> eh, there's a saver and a bit of armless sinning. When your intentions are right. Uh, you wed your half. I didn't. Doesn't always work out. I know what you've come fishing for, you know. Do you? Why don't you come to lunch? Ross is coming, and Gran, and that Turner woman who lives opposite Gran. Ross gone back to her, has he? Apparently. Oh, I liked his Scarlet Woman best. Scarlet Woman? <laughs> you sound just like Gran. <laughs> Neil's gone to see the kids at school. He won't be back till much later. I didn't feel up to it today. All the more reason for coming. Well, if you're sure you want me to. I've asked you, haven't I? You know, you're much more of a brother to me than Ross is. I'm here all the time, that's why. Ross isn't. There's more to it than that, I think. I don't think he likes to talk to me very much. Oh, he tried when I was up in London. He really tried. Finds me dull, I suppose, like Neil does. Rubbish! You and Neil are all right, aren't you? He married the family, not me. Now, Don, I'm sure that's not true. He's gone as far as he can at the works now, hasn't he? He'd have to leave Brassington's to get to the top. I don't think Neil wants the top. I don't think he's ambitious in that way. Why shouldn't he be? He's, he's capable, isn't he? Oh, yes, of course he's capable and well-liked in the works, which is more than I can claim. No, it's, um, it's more a question of what you want. I didn't think Neil had set his sight on the top, as you call it. Are you sure you're not being ambitious for him? Uh, Sarah, Dorothy's coming to lunch. Oh, good. You mean he didn't ask you first? Sarah can cope, can't you, love? Yes? Dad? No, he's not here. Uh, it's no good trying him at home again, either, for the next day or two. He's gone fishing. Fishing. <coughs> Brought somebody to see you. Jess. Stone the crows. Gran. Bye, you, Dad. I'll be down in a minute. You didn't have made your bed. I'd have made it if I'd stayed over the house. Annie's off while Dad's away. But it's something I learned at school anyway. Well, you learned it wrong. I've made it again. What's that you're looking at? I didn't know you had these. And all oh, they turned up the other day. So I put them on one side for you and your Max. You can sort out between you as what? That's Dad, isn't it? Aye, yeah, that's Lord Percival. He'd be about the same age as me, wouldn't he? Same age, better looking. 
He's worn well. We're well aware in family. None of us are aware as well as you. You've set an all-time record. Not long to go, though, now. Rubbish. I've not, and you know it. What will we do without you? Same as I do without mine. Hey, people in my head you'll never know. But the blood's inside you. I think of them sometimes, you know. Do you? I thought your generation cared not for the past. Hey, I've seen things you'll never see. It's all up here in my mind. See, I can talk to you about it, but I can't give it to you. You have to have lived it to know what I mean. Hey, I remember you sitting on that rug one Sunday. You had barely started to talk. You know, just a few words. When suddenly you reached out towards the fire. Was I burned? Don't you remember? No. I was burned, wasn't I? That's why you don't remember. You see, you put it at the back of your mind because it hurt, but you never did it again. It's still up there working for you. I still get burned, Gran, from time to time. Hello. That's the car outside. Look, I wondered, do you think you could make it to half past instead of one? I'd forgotten I've got the lodger to cook for. We've been invited to lunch at Max's. Oh. oh, if you can't make it, of course. She can make it. Well, honestly, I don't think I should. Can't he cook for himself, this lodger? Well, yes, he says he can, but I think it's a bit of an act. Well, send him off to the pub. You've no right taking the lodger when you've got a job to well, do. Well, he did it as a favour to our Les, damn him. Well, yes, I'll come. About 12 or so here. 12? Wow. I'd better go and break the bad news then, haven't I? I did nicely for you there, didn't I? Good old Gran. Uh, let's hope I don't regret it. Why should you? Because I'm fond of the lass. I've known her since you first saw daylight. What's your intentions? The best. Yeah, well, the best last time, weren't they? But it all broke up. What's to do with this woman in London? Nothing now, I told you. Bit of a ladies' man, aren't you? Not really. It's me that gets the boot, usually, as a matter of fact. Oh, no. There'll be a reason for it. It's work, mostly, Gran. When you're single, you're mobile labour. Off to Philadelphia in the morning. Never there when you wanted. In your private life, I mean. Well, you better get wed, then, quick. Especially now they've got a lodger. Gladstone, 276. I'll need the name of the agents that handle the cottage. It's Bramthorpe's in Stennett. Ta. That's all. Someone at work about the cottage. Why, are we letting it again? Hmm, possibly. It's an awful mess. Oh, I'll get someone from the cleaning staff to see to it. Where is he? He's gone for a walk. I wouldn't like to take him home to your place to eat, would you? Why? You'll be eating, won't you? No, I'm going out. That's a bit rough on him, isn't it? Well, take him home, then. I only took him because of you. I'm not going to get lumbered to the extent of changing my life. I don't do it for Dad. I'm blowed if I'm going to do it for some stranger. Taken against him, have you? No. Got into politics, got the rough end of the argument. Other way round, if anything. <laughs> hey, you met your match there. You could have fooled me. What'd you say that for? Well, he knows his stuff. Reg Brook says he's a walking encyclopedia on politics. Oh, God, what a boring image. Gee, I've never understood this left-wing reverence for the intellectuals. They're far more often wrong than right. You know, Dad can run rings round that lot when it comes to bettering the lot of the working man. Oh, aye. When's he coming back from this fishing trip? Oh, I want him to come back and settle strike for you, do you? Wes? Sorry, you'll have to eat at the pub. I've made my own apologies, thank you. Well, the pub will be fine. Uh, the woods that uh, run up from the village beyond the hill here, are they private? Well, no, there are public rights of way. Oh, good, good. Uh, might take a walk there later. Wouldn't bother you if they were private, would it? Oh, I come from the land of the grouse, the heather and the lads, you know. I like to be sure I'm walking. Well, I'm off. <clears throat> oh, you've got your key? I have the key you gave me, I. She's a good reputation as a teacher, but she's hopeless when it comes to politics. 
She's a very intelligent woman in all respects, so far as I can see. What's this? Dot's just asked me. <laughs> Stone crop. Yellow flower spreads all over the place, pops up without any help from me. Ah, uh, you've got green fingers. Oh, no, just luck, really. Anything I know, I taught by your mother. She didn't teach you the other things I know damn all about. I'm a bit like Dot, I suppose. Philistine's the word, isn't it? Feeling inferior? <laughs> yes, I think I probably am a bit. Good. It's usually the other way around. Oh, I know it makes you angry sometimes. I know we don't agree about Guy, about the amount of time I spend at work, other things. But there's one thing I'm not sure about. Do I bore you? Do you find me dull? You've been talking to Dot. Now, give me an honest answer. I think I ought to know if you do. Why do you think I got stuck on that silly drink thing? Why? Because I'm bored when you're not here. Oh, I try not to be. I read my books, I listen to my music, but I can't do that all the time. I need people. What do you put on your lawn? We've more weeds than grass on ours. Yeah, it's something I get in a bottle from Stennett. I'll give you the label later on. Anything I can do uh, to help, I mean. Well, there's nothing to do except peel the potatoes, and Max is going to do that, aren't you? Yeah, I wish I could get Neil to peel the potatoes. He doesn't even help with the washing up. Well, you could <laughs> help Max, as a matter of fact. We're running a bit late, actually. Annie used to let us peel the potatoes when we were kids. We used to have a race. He had a gift for picking the easy ones. I expect he still does. Come on. Hello? It's Mrs. Brassington, Guy's mother. No, his father isn't here at the moment. Oh, well, I think we ought to stay here in case he comes back, don't you? Well, of course he'll come back here. Where else would he go? He told you that, did he? No, no, of course you had to tell me. I'll ring you again in about an hour. Our phone seems to be out of order. I'm ringing from a friend's. No, 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 no. I'll ring you. Again. Hello, everyone. Hello, Grand. Hello. Hello. Dot's Hello. in the kitchen. Ah, oh, well, I'll go and watch over her, else she'll burn it, whatever it is. Hello, Grand. Been burning good food all her life. You overcook things, I tell her. Goodness goes out of it. Can I help? I wouldn't if I were you. Would you like to look round the garden? No, I'd like to look round the house. Max planned the house. Max loves planning things. He loves giving conducted tours, don't you, Max? Would you mind? No, of course not. Oh. Did the school ring again? I rang them. Is he back? No. I'm going out of my mind, Ross. Tell Max. I can't. You said things were better between you. Why risk it? I'm not sure I care anymore. Stopping with Turners. Till I get something more family. Yeah, that's where I heard. I'm new too. I looked at the place till the day, but I'm a family. Wouldn't suit. Suit a single bloke like you, though. Want well, the name of the agent? Ah, well, thanks. 
You'll find it on there. It belongs to some people called Brassington. Now, Les would call me a traitor to my class if he could see me alongside this chap. Well, he'd be right and all. You've always had ideas above your station. Union branch secretary, Jay Turner, is crying. Now, the new aristocracy. I give it up. We're no different to what we ever were. Older, that's all, though. Some of us won't admit it, though. You're as old as you feel. <laughs> old dogs don't learn new tricks. Happen that old tricks are better than new ones. Well, you didn't say that when you used to come round here when we were lads. I've lived a life since then. Do you think I've learned nothing? <laughs> oh, you're, you're fresh when you're young. It's all fresh and new. That's what's different. Aye. Uh, that's what's different. Our Ross is chasing his youth already. In respect of our Ruth, you mean? You think they'll make a go of it? Well, they're the best stage of all happened. One foot in one world, one in the other. Not too late, like you and me. Go oh, away. Write your own obituary. <laughs> At a large funeral, attended by his many friends. That's how mine starts. There'll only be you and me and his relatives. I'm going to have a look to see if they're arriving. Forgot. The trouble with getting old is you don't feel old. Oh. That's how it is. More wine, anybody? You opened a bottle more than we needed. I need this. I'll have a drop more. Who's taking me home? Oh, I am. You'll have no more then. I'll have a drop. <laughs> hey, the worst than men these days, women. We're catching up, that's all, Graham. Mm. In the race from reality. Mankind cannot stand too much reality. Who said that? Elliot. Some people have other escapes, of course. They go fishing. Like Dad, you mean? I meant like mine, actually. He's gone fishing? You didn't tell me that. Look, I may not agree with the politics of the rest of our family, but I don't grass on them. That was a slip of the tongue. Henry's gone fishing. Here's to Henry, the noblest Brassington of them all. Oh, where's he gone? We don't know. Grand might know, but I don't think she'll be telling. No, I shall not, neither. He was entitled to a better peace and quiet at his age. Where's Jim gone? I don't know. Some place he used to go with Mum. Before they made the mistake of having Les and me. Oh, you think it's a mistake having children? For some people, yes. Not for them, as it happens. Your prejudice. You get landed with the results at school. Oh, come on, it's not always the parents who can't cope, you know, or the kids. Sometimes it's the school. The educational system. The defense of the public school coming up. I don't have to defend it. It defends itself by results. Do you agree? Oh, well, you're assuming that I'm against comprehensives. It's not the system that's at fault. It's the way it's applied. Some of the teachers, if you like. I mean, I don't agree with our present head, for example, who says that she won't have her stuff criticised when the odd parent has the temerity to speak up at a PTA meeting. I'd criticise them. Me too, if you like. I mean, my head is like an old-school dustbin. It's full of rubbishy ideas that nobody believes in anymore, except the dishonest. You haven't answered my question. I thought Ruth answered it very adequately. If you don't like the system, get in there and change it. I pay for the alternative because I haven't got the time to get in there and change it. I'm not an educationalist. And pay their wages with my taxes, and damn bad value for money it is, too. What about the people who can't opt time? If I were them, I'd shut my head off. Oh, who listens these days? Who listens? I am going for a walk through the woods. Anyone coming? A walk through the woods? Alone. Yeah, go on after her. She can't even walk straight. Nothing but the old tree to bump into, Gran. <laughs> I like the way you and Jim went at each other. No real malice in it. <laughs> we took some nasty swings at each other when we were younger. I've learnt more to him than he has to me for all his lad things otherwise. Back to your roots? He never left his. You regret you left yours, do you? No, oh, I don't think so, Jess. I've had a good life. 
There's plenty mice out of the fence think they're badly done too. Get to the other side, never tasted that, I tell them. I've tasted both. Is that why you and me parted? Fence too high for me, was it? Oh, we were never that serious, were we? Weren't we? You don't remember anything about it. Do you? Don't I? I mean, you always had a smile and a wave for me whenever we passed after. I didn't smile the night you fell out for good. Wept all night in my bed. Our Meg comforted me. She never forgave you. I did. You did better for yourself in the end. Who's to say what is best? You'd have to go back and live your life all over again. It's a pity that those who have lived a life together can't leave together. You feel lost when you're left on your own. Lost. Aye, you do. Bored? Me? No, I always inspect other people's books. Who does most of the reading? Sarah. Max hardly reads at all. Works his real interest. Mm. Well, this strike doesn't seem to be worrying him. Well, Sunday's his day of rest, and he works at it. What does he think to your coming back? He doesn't know, as a matter of fact. We've not had a chance to talk about it yet. And no, he's not completely settled. You might not, you mean. But I thought that was what you wanted. It is, but it's uh, complicated. Oh? I'm glad we got together again. Only... Why are we so damn formal with each other? Me too, I mean, not just you. Are we? You know we are. All passion spent. I don't know. It's all right like this, isn't it? You know, treading carefully, finding out. Well, at least you changed your mind. You turned me down flat the day of Mother's funeral. What happened? I don't know. I just changed my mind, that's all. Well, you were so persistent, and I wasn't sure. It's easier to start a new relationship than to pick up an old one. An old, boring one, you mean? You make me sound like a bit of knitting you left lying around. We can be very fond of a bit of knitting. Fond? Look, we're at a dangerous age. You mean the age when you marry because there's nothing much else to do? Why don't we just leave things as they are for a bit? Scared? Yes, I'm scared of substituting things for people. I like this house. I'm full of beautiful things, but it's not enough, is it? I'm not prying, Ross. I just get the feeling. I don't want a marriage that is just held together by the house and the kids. Grant's just meet me at croquet. Your turn, Ruth. Croquet? What an exciting life you live. It's a very relaxing game. Well, I'll go and relax then. We always let Grant win, by the way. She's a bad loser. Mm. You two back together again? I mean, on a permanent basis. Or should I mind my own damn business? It's too early to say. It's time you settled down. That's what she's afraid of, that sort of marriage. Well, that's what marriage is, basically, isn't it? You're not a romantic, are you? Not so you'd notice. There's no better roses, marriage. Brotherly warming. Well, mother and Dad had their ups and downs. What do you suppose made him suddenly go off fishing like that? There's not much he can do at the plant, is there? What are we supposed to do? Sit and glare at each other from opposite sides of the fence and watch the orders disappear somewhere else? Any other idea? Yes, I might have. Huh? You're not telling, though. Remember how we kept things from each other when we were kids? <laughs> Mostly things neither of us would have been interested to know anyway. I used to tell Mum and make her swear not to tell you. I only did it when I found out you were doing it. Copying you, I suppose. My big brother. And now you know more than I do. I do. Working for the parent company. There's no use asking you what they're up to, is it? What makes you think they're up to something? <laughs> the casual visits over the last six months or so. Always for some deceptively ordinary reason. You wouldn't have thought we existed up until six months ago, as long as we were making a profit. And then there was a feasibility study for the new handling plant. That went on a bit, didn't it? Seemed to involve the whole works at one time. And now you're here. 
Just a family visit, of course. Yeah? Well, if there's a fault on the line, it's obviously being cleared. Who told you there was a fault on the line? This is the cottage you told me about the other day. Yes, this is it. <laughs> I've told us to let. I need a place. I thought you got digs. Oh, they're just temporary till I get fixed up. Oh, magic word, that. Temporary. Makes life bearable. It's about all it is for most people. You disapprove of me, don't you? You think I'm trivial, a pampered woman. Too much time on my hands, protected from the harsh realities of life. Are you not? There are harsh realities you have no inkling of. I don't say that just because I had too much wine for lunch. Do you know what the harshest reality of life is? It's when you scream and nobody comes. You'll not be driving again today, I reckon. I was sober this morning. Ah, you were. I want to look inside. Hi. There's a key here under the stone. Yeah, here we are. I warn you, I bring all my lovers here, trivial pampered woman that I am. When the hell didn't she tell me? Why? I've been in a pub where you've got to take an evening stroll to relieve yourself. <laughs> it's a five-minute walk round here. <laughs> We'd a yard to cross at Railway Terrace till 1953. 24th of September to Thursday. Grand in my mind like VE Day. The day we got our water closet inside the yard. <laughs> I remember Les and our Ruth kept on going up to take a look at it <laughs> like we'd won a cup. Uh, when I was a lad, we still had the old earth closet out in the dark mid-winter with an old storm lantern wind blowing up through the hole in the seat straight from Siberia. Uh, they don't know they're born these days. The old generation takes such things for granted. They've no remembrance of a Siberian winter nipping at your backside. Well, you can't communicate experience. What if we could do? What you rightly say we can't. Communicate experience. What would I want to pass on before I die? Pain of an empty belly? Or the sight of my mum weeping? Because she was copper short of being able to put shoes on my feet. Ah, if they believe me, they still don't want to know. Well, can we blame them? I can. Not your own kind. Brought up to live by the stick and the carrot by your kind. Yeah, well, it's nearer to human nature than Jerusalem, Jim. Your own government have played it no different. You're radicals. They only want to remove the carrot in favor of the stick. Your union backs a policy that's in favor of them running the works. Here, yeah. when the union becomes the employer, who's going to stand between the employer and the working man? You two still at it. Oh, you saved him from trying to answer a question he's no real answer for. Who says I haven't? I'll wear it up while I'm taking that five-minute walk. <laughs> Do. <laughs> You're putting the world to rights. No, I think we're old enough to know better than try that, Jess. You don't know him very well, do oh, you? He's my son. Oh, and that gives you an automatic understanding of him, I suppose. I understand him very well. It seems to me you're objecting to the fact that I understand him all too well, and because I understand him, I'm not going to bend as you want me to. Bend? Take him away from the school, which is what he's hoping you'll persuade me to do, because he won't grit his teeth and stick it out, because he's like too many of his generation looking for the easy option. You're his enemy, Sarah, not me. What kind of a life is he going to have if he doesn't prepare himself for it educationally? And not just educationally, either. Character. Backbone. Oh, you like that word, don't you, Max? Yes, that stops us from taking the easy way out. Oh, for God's sake, not another. 
I've got problems too, you know, problems you couldn't even begin to understand. You mean work? Yes, work! <laughs> How do you think we survive? You've got a great contempt for work, Sarah. Who's going to pick up the pieces if I pack up? Who's going to pay for the bottles? It costs, you know, the easy way out. Who's going to pick up the bill at the end of the day? I pay too, you know. I pay in loneliness stuck in this damn house of my own. I pay in not being able to find any purpose in my life. Where's my job satisfaction, Max? Or don't I qualify? Something went wrong between us after Gwen died, didn't it? She died, didn't she? What do you mean? I still see her sometimes. She follows me up the stairs. Into the rooms as I prowl around while you're out at work. This little ghost. grows. She's not stuck in that last image one has of people. I talked to her the other day, standing in the door of the room that was hers in this empty house. I said, if you knew how much I missed you. I miss you too, she said. Oh, my love, my little love. It's been easier for me, hasn't it? Has it? How do I know how it's been for you? How would I know when you've never told me? Work saved me. From what? From dwelling on it, just now and then. In the car or at work, here in the house. It would come to me sometimes. Unbearable. I've borne it. Some things in life are unbearable, Sarah. You have to turn from them to survive. Easy option. <laughs> yes, I suppose I asked for that one. About Guy. Yes, about Guy. Not much we can do but wait for him. He won't be coming home. Where else will he go? <laughs> Didn't they tell you what he said? When they got him back yesterday, he said he wasn't coming home then or ever. He said you told him he couldn't come home if he ran away again. 